Hi, hello. My name is Don Soltero, and the purpose of this video is to show you, to talk about bacteria, how to prevent it, where does it appear, and all the type of information. Since this whole thing is a class project, um, and we had to choose where we wanted to swab, and where we thought bacteria was mostly located, and you know where they live and hang out and stuff, I chose keys. Not only anyone's keys, but my teacher's keys. Obviously, I don't have them right now, but as you can see, the reason why I chose keys was because if you see right here, there's a lot of dirt and not dirt, but you know, it's dirty stuff and you know, it's a lot of keys, you know. So I thought that's where bacteria will be mostly located because everyone uses it, you know, everyone passes it down, and that type of stuff, you know. So I swabbed my teacher's keys and I took pictures from day one, day three, and day seven, I think. So, I'm gonna put a few pictures and I'm gonna talk over it and I'm gonna show you uh, progressively and the size, shape, and color. So where I swapped was obviously Ms. Visano's keys or my teacher's keys. And the first picture is day three and that's how it came out in all little small dots. And then, if we go on to day seven, it's more circular, you know, the elevation is more raised the shape is like entire it's kind of now I'm going to show you a few detrimental and helpful bacteria that you probably don't know about all right first bacteria up is the lactobacillus and it's mm, mostly in milk and dairy products and because of that um, cheese and yogurt and all that kind of stuff it, they use this bacteria so it could be made but it's good bacteria and so the next one as seen on picture is the bifidu bacterium which is rod shaped as well which is those big rod shaped things they're usually in medicine to help prevent diarrhea and all those symptoms and that's why it's really good for you um, this is a harmful bacteria it's rod shaped as seen on picture as it's some um, little green things it's called the Yersinia pestis and it causes skin infections, seizures, chills, fevers and also in the next picture is I'm going to show you that that's what happens when you actually have it and it's like like a disease kind of alright this one is the Clostridium titani it's a detrimental bacteria as well and it's like rod shaped box shaped kind of and as soon as it finds a wound in you it will replicate itself find its way replicate itself and um, it, it leads to muscular spams and respiratory failures okay so the way bacteria replicates is a type of asexual reduction which is binary fission and what it does actually um, since it's a bacteria, what it does, it just by itself it doesn't need any other bacteria. It just cuts itself and keeps on replicating and replicating. And then those bacteria do the same thing over and, and over until they get a lot of bacteria, many bacteria. And they keep on doing that until there's probably thousands and millions. And that's how you really get sick. And that's why it takes a while because. Sometimes your white blood cells are fighting, and um, it takes a lot because they just keep on re replicating inside your body. Based on the data that I collected, my thoughts on bacteria was, wherever it is, um, whatever the location is, make sure um, always to be careful what you touch and make sure you not to touch your face if you're touching something like metals or something dirty because they have a lot of bacteria and you, it could be really critical to your health if you do, like if you do interact with your physical body and make sure to prevent this, wash your hands all the time, make sure you don't sneeze and shake someone's <coughs> hand, you're going to pass it and um, use hand sanitizer and make sure to um, wash your hands with warm water, really warm water or really cold water and yeah just be very careful, make sure you don't think twice for what you're doing and yeah thank you